Rebecca. Perfect. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to call the facility committee meeting to order, noting that two of the board members are live. We have Jack Heinemann and it's on Zoom this morning. He is not in town. Um, welcome to all of our guests this morning. Uh, I need approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, public comments. I have one public comment, and if anybody else is in the audience, I would like to speak with me um, from a little class. So the strategy is you can come up to the table or stand up. We have a mic that will pick it up. This is a recorded meeting. Um, if you could keep your comments to about three minutes, that would be great, but you're welcome to come up and share with us your comments. Hi, my name is Tracy. I'm with Mobile Glass Inc. And this is Dan Burnhams. He's an estimator that big the Wanaki Middle School project. I wanted to come and introduce ourselves. Uh, we've actually been in business in town, Westport, since 1960. Uh, my father, Tom Hellenbrand, started it. And uh, six of us kids went to the Wanaki High School. And I know Mr. Hetzel and Joan. Um, we, I just wanted to acknowledge that there is a pricing disparity in our bid and that's mostly due to my passion to get this job but also we were very close on heritage and so it was critical for me to get this job so we have done arboretum remodel we have done uh the original her uh, prairie heritage uh, and we also did the interior package at the wanakee intermediate school so I just wanted you to know who we are, and we definitely want to do this job for you. Thank you. Um, any other comments? All right, moving on. Um, first item on the agenda is our Heritage Elementary, kind of an update on our owner contingency and things. Steve, are you? Yeah, I can take us. Okay. So we're gonna start with the owner contingency tracker. I'm gonna ask Rebecca to bring that up. <clears throat> so every month we share um, this document with the committee. If you wanna go keep going to the next page. Um, so th what this document does is it continues to track any change orders that are occurring at Heritage Elementary. Um, as a reminder, any change orders over 50,000 come through the facility committee. Um, so we did have one of those, uh, I think it was two months ago. Any change orders under 50,000 are signed off by Randy. Um, you can see the grand total of what's remaining. Um, so you see the 2.6 million, or is it 2.5? You can see that. Yeah. 2.5 in the middle column. And then to the far right is what's called the owner's contingency. And just as a reminder, that came from the value engineering that was approved earlier on in the project. Um, so you add the two together, that's the current balance as far as change orders uh, for heritage. Uh, we have talked a little bit in this committee before that ultimately these funds that remain for heritage, um, depending on the board's decision, could be added to the maintenance uh, the maintenance funding across the district. Uh, we have no intention of doing that this summer. Um, we are definitely nearing or at capacity for projects for the summer. So there's no intent to rush anything with these funds. We're gonna take our time, let the school open up, um, complete all of the projects at the New Heritage. And then ultimately at some point, we'll have the conversation with Bogle as far as when they're comfortable closing out the project. And then we'll have the conversation at this committee as to whether or not there's interest in um, taking these funds and moving them over to the maintenance spreadsheet that we'll end up reviewing in a few minutes. Uh, any questions about the contingency tracker and where we're at for the new school? Randy uh, or, or Steve, when uh, do we have to uh, have these uh, funds committed? Um, so we still have all of 2025 uh, to spend these funds. So we still have quite a bit of time um, on that. Uh, we're, we've been working very closely with 
um, Jay and Vogel on the spend down requirements that we've talked about with the budget committee and feel right. like we're in position and continuing to meet that. Um, we continue to, to monitor it. We do have requirements in, in August of this year and then February of next year um, for meeting specific spend down requirements, but we do have the ability to utilize these funds beyond that date since the dollar amount is relatively small compared to the scope of what we borrowed. So we can carry these over to next summer. Thank you. Otherwise, Rebecca, do you want to go back to the agenda notes for a moment? <clears throat> so as far as the schedule, um, Randy, John, and I continue to attend the, uh, they're called the OAC meetings at the site every other week. Uh, we continue to receive positive updates. The date that we've been using is July 31st. Um, that is the date at which um, we are going to uh, be able to start all of the process of the heavy move-in. Um, and so we're lining up all of the, the right people to get that done as soon as we get past that. Um, our most recent update is that we're um, maybe a couple days ahead of schedule from that. Um, so things are looking very positive on the schedule end. Uh, then we want to jump into the next paragraph <clears throat> where Jack is very familiar, familiar, excuse me, familiar with what this is. Um, there's been months worth of discussion regarding what's called a tax district that's uh, being referred to as the Kilkenny West development. Um, so the village board a few months ago ultimately approved um, Kilkenny West Tax District. Jack was the board's rep on the Joint Review Board, which also approved the project. Um, as part of that project, um, Jack has spoke at the village several times about the safety component. And a part of this project is two paths that would be built off our site that could ultimately connect to our site. And so what that refers to is the Tierneys would be responsible for developing a path from Highway Q all the way up to our neighbors to the east. Um, the village has a right of way through the neighbor's property to our east, which will connect to the path that the Tierneys are building. The village has asked us to move the crosswalk location, which was originally planned to be closer to the school, down to Ganser. If the crosswalk is down to Ganser, the path on our neighbor's property has to be completed or we'd be crossing students basically into a ditch. So we've been working very carefully and closely with the village uh, there is the possibility that we would need to put in a temporary crossing guard location kind of at the crest of the hill near the school if the paths are not completed on time. But to continue the discussion on the path, our site was not designed with the concept of a path coming all the way from Q to our border on the east. Once we learned that there was very positive momentum on the timeline for that path, um, Randy and I asked Roxanne Johnson, who's our civil engineer for the project, to look at a redesign for our site. So the redesign for our site would result in the path connecting to where the path ends on our property, our neighbor's property to the east, and then extending all the way across our property down to Old Dora Drive. Basically, that would create a straight walking path all the way from Highway Q down to Aldora Lane. In order to make that happen, Roxanne has come up with a plan working with the village to dedicate district property to the village to, a, to create a right-of-way 
Um, the reason for that is there are utility boxes in the way. Um, if utility boxes are in the way on a dedicated public right of way, we're not responsible for moving them. So the whole premise behind that is to then have the district not be responsible for the costs of moving the utilities. I'm gonna ask Rebecca to bring up the, the a document called School Lands Dedication so you can get a look at kind of what's going on here. So this was a survey that was completed by um, Williamson Surveying. Um, so what we've had to do to get this to move quickly is we've had to have Williamson come back out um, and you can see that this survey identifies the area to be dedicated to the public for the, it says road, but a path right away. Uh, Randy's intention is to add this to the board's agenda for next Monday night for consideration. I would then need to work with a property attorney to create the legal paperwork to sign off on to give that property um, for the public path. Uh, you can see in the upper right corner, um, there's a little bit of a circle there. It's a reference <laughs> to the utilities that are in the way. Uh, we do believe that this is the best long-term plan for the community, but it's fair to know that's not what the current plan is on our site. So the path would need to move uh, we do have a path that goes all the way across the site. It's just not along the road and it wouldn't connect properly. Um, and so if we don't change our design, basically the path that's coming into our property is gonna kind of just curve in and go not in the right way. Uh, because again, remember, our, we didn't know that this was going to happen when our site plan was <laughs> A year ago. Uh, Randy, do you have anything you want to add or we can check with Jack to see if he has anything to add? Let me just kind of add a little context to it. When we were at the site last week, we we walked that whole area. And as you take a look at it, just for the long-term benefit of the community, we think running the path straight makes the most sense. The idea that Roxanne Johnson brought to us about creating, um, um, kind of redesignating the right-of-way, I think that's uh, a prudent piece for us. That's what Steve's alluding to is we'll bring that to Monday's board meeting. And what we're going to ask for the board is for your approval of us to move forward with this and to give administration authority then to work with our attorney to file our correct paperwork. Uh, the one thing we don't want to have happen is for this, to, this would slow down um, the construction of the path if we didn't have that in place. So that's really our first order of business. So we're looking for support from the board to delegate some of that authority to us to finish that process. So that then the design and construction can move forward. Randy, two questions. Uh, one, uh, who who's going to build the uh, path? Is that on us? And then uh, two, who maintains the path? Um, building the path would be would be us, and maintaining it, I'm assuming, is us too, Jack. Oh, okay. no, the village. The village will do that. Will do the path. Yep. yep so we have to build it. They'll maintain it. Yep. And so in the project, Jack, we already have funding for a path. It's just not at that location. So I did put in the notes, uh, some type of chain order should be expected out of this. So if you go out to the site, the curb is already installed and we would have to regrade the property from where the path would sit down to the curb. Um, mm -hmm. so block that with Roxanne a little bit. Um, I don't know enough about what specifically, what work might look differently than what was on the original plan. So that's mm -hmm. gonna be our meeting at nine o'clock this morning, is to, to talk through that. So there will likely be some type of change order that will be coming out of this. Uh, but just know like the path is already in the budget. So it's just moving it. Um, yep. Already grading in the budget to grade the, the path that was supposed to go in there. It's mm -hmm. just likely there's probably some additional grading 
and some additional connections to the path. Maybe there's going to be some additional blacktop. Uh, yeah. We have to get a chance, but also to get those numbers. But ultimately, in the end, um, I know that Jack has spoken quite a bit about this down at the village um, and has really been an advocate for safety. You know, the times I've been down there, that's what Jack has spoken for is, is the safety component. And if you look at the broader plan for the area, the problem that's going to occur without the path is the homes that would be built basically in the entrance to Hill County West. Many of those students will exit on Woodland because it's going to be the fastest way for them to get to school. Now there'll be other ways for them to get to school, but you know, kids are kids and they're going to take different ways to get to school. They'd end up with there be no path. So unfortunately, they'd be walking potentially along Woodland, which would not be a, a safe route. The path is going to get the kids, give the kids an option. In addition to that, the path is going to give any students who happen to live in Kilkenny East who may be interested in biking or walking on a nice day, uh, a straight shot down the path that goes past Starbucks up to the corner, and then a straight shot down to the schools. Um, so it really does truly improve the safety of, you know, not only students going to and from school, but also the pedestrians in the area. Um, so I don't know, Jack, do you want to speak at all to the work that you put in to try to get this done? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, again, talking about safety, I think uh, we're going to put some uh, uh, crossing guards uh, by queue. So if we do have any any uh, kids that uh, utilize it coming out of Kilkenny or Southbridge or uh, East, you know, we'll have a uh, safe, uh, safe uh, pathway across queue. The other thing the uh, village is doing is uh, they're doing a uh, traffic study on uh, Q, which, uh, you know, I think uh, they're looking also in uh, parallel to us, uh, you know, how to make the, how to improve traffic and pedestrian flow through there. Uh, we're also going to put, uh, you know, high visibility at yeah, cross uh crosswalks, you know, Steve and uh, administration has been working with the uh, village, you know, so that uh, makes it very visible that uh, these are our uh, crosswalks. So I think uh, all in all, I think it's a, uh, a good plan and, and it just, uh, you know, improves not only walking, but also the road system that's going to go in is going to improve uh, traffic flow through that area. So the crossing that we're talking about is that at Eastville Island? Is that what we're thinking? Sure. Just so I can get a picture of it. Yeah. And the original path was going like it wasn't going to be going on too. It was going to be back in the development then. Yeah. Uh, so that. yeah, I appreciate that question. So what we're looking at doing for next year is we've always had three crossing guards on queue. We've had a crossing guard at the newer all the newer, but the newer entrance of the high school, and then 5th Street and 8th Street. Um, we're going to be moving one of the crossing guards to where Jack referenced at the intersection now of Woodland and Q. And the reason for that is there's very likely to be student traffic coming two ways up to Q. Um, there's the possibility of elementary age students and obviously intermediate age students who live in the neighborhood um, to the west of the existing heritage. Um, even though they're going to be bused, there's always kids in bus zones that choose to walk or bike to school. They would have the, a couple of options to get across queue, but they certainly could walk the path that goes all the way in front of Endress and then in front of our property and then up to the corner and would need assistance getting across queue. Um, we also know that there is the very high likelihood that students in the Kilkenny East and Southbridge area um, also on a nice day could potentially get on their bikes and go out on Peaceful Valley, take a right by um, the stoplight there, there's a path all the way in front of the businesses there, come all the way up to Q, and right now they get stuck. And so we're working with the village as well on 
as Jack mentioned, high visibility crosswalks. We're looking at doing one to go north to get across Woodland and then to go west to get across. So our crossing guard there is gonna to have to monitor really two options for students to cross. And ultimately there may be a third because if the path is completed by September 1st, there likely will be also a crosswalk to go um, from that side. So basically the south side straight across to the path. Um, so we're gonna have to do a lot of communicating, Ted, with our parents as to where the crossing guards are, what's the safest path to school. Um, if either the path that the village is going to build or that the tyrannies are going to build is not ready by September 1st, we need a contingency plan, uh, which we're working with the village on as well, which we would have to communicate to parents. So uh, we're definitely planning on that. Annie's already aware of it and it's going to help me get those messages out. Uh, but we're not looking at Peaceful Valley. We're looking at Q to kind of be the place that we're going to help get across uh, Woodland Q. So. so, Steve, what do you need from us for this to continue this discussion? Are we in favor of this discussion of keeping the path straight, Jack? Why don't yeah, we? I think we're. I, I think we're in favor of it, and you know what's proposed is uh, the best long term, and and I would, uh, if you need a motion, I'd make a yeah, motion to approve uh, approve. Uh, this uh, easement. And I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, I, I appreciate just, that. I just want to add something. I mean, I think Steve and Jack have put an inordinate amount of time into this working with the village. So thanks to those guys for um, kind of heading this up and really finding this solution. I think it's the best long term one for the community. <clears throat> Good. Um, before, before we go into the middle school, I had somebody who would like to speak. Rick Nelson, Jack, Ted, are you okay if we have another public comment? Yeah, sure. Sure. So, Rick, if you want to come up before we begin the middle school. Hey guys, my name is Rick Nelson. I own the business, Vagilante Records, We're right across the street from the district here. And I uh, just want to tell you guys, thank you for right now. I have no number on the school, and I'm very honored to have that. And I have four children in the school district here. Um, built schools here for the past 30 years for the new board members that I have never met before. But I just want to just introduce myself because I didn't get a chance to and I got some new members, but um, I have four children in four different schools in this district. So you guys, thank you for your time and the consideration and thank everybody you. have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, with that, we have the uh, new middle school agenda. Okay, you're going to help us out? Yep, me and Ed. Morning. Morning, Adam. Okay. So today I have all these bits here when we get to that point. Perfect. That tab up there. And so, the oh, lots of these Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, while Jay's getting ready, just as some background, um, obviously Ted's joining the facility committee, so I just want to share just a little bit of background. So I put in the notes that, um, as a reminder, on April 16th, Randy, myself, and Allie had a chance to attend the day at the middle school uh, for the May facility committee meeting. Uh, Jay came and provided a high level overview on the bidding process. So that wasn't the guaranteed maximum price, but Jay mentioned that was going to come back. Uh, and the theory behind it, the term, the guaranteed maximum price is it's a contractual agreement where Vogel is indicating to the school board that they will be able to build that school at a price not to exceed the guaranteed maximum price. Uh, we had one at Heritage, and we knew that that was going to be part of the process for the middle school. Um, Jay mentioned at the previous facility committee meeting that was going to come back to June. Um, so he's going to be talking about that. At the previous facility committee meeting, we brought forward uh, subcontractor bids on fire protection, concrete reinforcement, and concrete ready mix. Uh, we gave a preview that there would be additional subcontractor approvals coming to the next facility committee meeting. Some of them were in the packet. Some of them were not. 
Um, so we want to be really clear and cover the ones that are in the packet first. And then Rebecca has um, in her Google Drive, she's going to pull up and we're going to go over the ones that you are seeing for the first time this morning. So I'm just going to ask Adam to make sure when he gets the chance to go over subcontractors, he can reference what's in here in the packet and then what he sent to me yesterday that Rebecca is going to pull up so you can see the difference. Um, Jay is going to go through a presentation that's probably going to focus a lot on the guaranteed maximum price and kind of how that works. And then I think he's probably going to ask Adam to share the, the subcontractor bids. Um, and before he does that, I just, I want to thank Vogel on behalf of the district. If you remember when the selection process was occurring for Vogel, one of the things that was very important to the board was engaging the local subcontractor community. Uh, and that's been a high focus for Volvo. Volvo's been uh, very engaging to uh, those subcontractors and businesses that are in the Wanakee Community School District, making sure that they were aware of when the bids were going out. Um, as you know, um, not every time every bid has gone to a local subcontractor, uh, but um, there's been every effort made to include you know, the business community in Wanakee, and that is something that Vogel has been following through on all of these bids. As you can tell so far, at the middle school, we've engaged Robinson Brothers, which is in the business part. We've engaged Advanced Concrete, and we have other Wanakee-based businesses in front of you this morning. Um, so I definitely think it's something to be proud about with these schools, not only with Heritage, but what you're gonna be seeing um, for the middle school, there's definitely a very strong Wanakee connection, a theme that's been occurring um, for both Heritage and as well as the middle school. So we'll ask Mobile to touch on that um, as well when they get into the subcontractor bids. So Jay, you're welcome to comment on that if you want to. Yeah, I was just going to add Andrews as well, who's still yeah. supply at the middle school. And... All right, let's start with the... Um... Presentation for the GMP. Okay, so again, we're going to cover, I'll cover the guaranteed maximum price discussion, and then Adam's going to jump in for the project bid awards. As, as usual, we've got this slide just to remind everybody the different uh, aspects of the uh, referendum. And today we're focusing on the middle school, the 99.9. So last month when we presented, um, we did have favorable bid results and we reported as such. But from last month to this month, we've really had time to dive into all of those bids. As Steve alluded to, we've been able to scope enough of the larger numbers to be able to present to you recommendations for subcontractor awards. There is still some scopes that we're not awarding today and we'll be awarding over the next two months. But we've had the ability to at least review those enough to be confident that the number we're carrying for the GMP is going to be a sell. So I just wanted you to understand that process. So then where we sit today in terms of the GMP is a construction amount of $84,280,000. We are carrying a contingency of $3,940,000, and you'll see an asterisk next to that. Ultimately, what we've done in discussion with Steve and Randy is we're carrying 4%, so that's $3,370,000 of that as part of our GMP. And then we're also carrying an additional $570,000 for an owner contingency. So when Steve reviewed that document for heritage right away in the meeting today, he saw there was two columns. There was a construction manager's contingency and an owner. Um, what we've done is we've created those same two buckets in terms of contingencies within the GMP. And that's really to give the project the ability to do, um, address any owner scope changes that may come up, obviously, depending on the thresholds, they'd be coming back to facility or ultimately the board, but administration does have uh, thresholds to be some of the changes. There is, and I'll get into it a little bit later, but there is some potential to add to that owner and contingency amount with some other uh, value engineering options that we put to the table as well in the next one. Uh, and then we are still carrying a soft cost of 11700000 So that would be 
outside of our guaranteed maximum price. And a lot, a majority of that is for design and then FF and E, so furniture, fixtures, equipment. There's also some dedicated equipment that the, the district will purchase direct specifically for like the tech and the aid areas, and that's some of um, John's equipment for maintaining the facility as well. As we indicated last time, based on the favorable bid results, we were able to pull in all those scopes identified there that were tracking as alternates. So we have resurfacing of the track, an outdoor classroom area, some additional lockers, cellular repeater system, and then going full height with the tile and restrooms. And then we also included a budget for solar panels, which uh, we're currently carrying about $750,000 for solar panels. So we were able to bring about a million dollars back into the project that we had set aside as alternates just to see where numbers should go. So again, overall, we were really happy with the results and feel like we're sitting in a good spot from the contingency standpoint as well. Now, obviously you've seen the tracking on the heritage contingency and it's not moved much. Um, ultimately our goal is to, to manage this work very similarly, but um, we do still want to have that contingency just to make sure if something does come up with the test and still be able to guarantee mm -hmm. the top mm -hmm. number from my perspective. Any questions on that? And then, as I mentioned, I did want to indicate uh, there's about three items for sure that we're looking at. All of them re involve the envelope or the exterior of the building um, in terms of potentially being able to save some additional dollars. So there's some alternate storefront and curtain wall framing vendors that um, could provide some savings there in terms of the supplier to the actual subcontractor. And then similarly with the metal panels, um, there's two different main types of metal panels here. We've got some feedback in terms of uh, an or equal product that could save money and still give the same performance. So we're evaluating that with the design team and ultimately the administration. And then again, the masonry side, there's a couple of things we're looking at. Uh, there will be other items that come up Throughout the project, obviously, if we have the ability to save money, we're going to be bringing it to the table and get the feedback from the team. Uh, but those three are larger type items that we really, really would like to have finalized before Randy um, retires, just because he's been involved throughout the whole process and um, don't want to have some bigger decisions like that hanging out there for Dr. Monaco when she starts, because she'll have enough to get up to speed on. Okay. So what Jay is saying, there's no intention of letting Randy post in June. <laughs> yeah, well, we say that a lot. Before June 30th, we're going to do this. Yeah, so. Well, with, you know, there's so many parties going on. I don't know. I don't know when you get Randy's time. <laughs> That's Friday. <laughs> oh. And then I'm going to turn it over to Ad. But this slide really just at a high level indicates some of the subcontract awards and we'll get into those detailed big tabs as well. And Adam, can you start with the ones that were included in the packet? We will go through those first. So we'll have Rebecca bounce back onto that and then we'll go into the ones that you emailed me yesterday just to keep it clear. Yes, yeah, so Rebecca, do you want to open the steel masonry and poison big tab first then? So um, for three of the larger scopes that involved a lot of key companies, we kind of showed the, the more detailed breakdown here. So I'll go through those first. Masonry is the first one we're showing here. So we had four really responsive bidders. We scoped all four of these contractors. Um, shows you no calling as a local contractor. They were really helpful during the bidding process. Um, but again, feel good about these numbers. Walsh ended up being low. We talked a lot about commitments for the project. Um, feel good about that. And as you can see, they kind of came in slightly under our, our budget we were tracking. So if there's no questions on that. We can scroll down to the next one. Is Walsh welcome? There it's all Exonia. So I can't buy the town. That's a good area. So the next scope we have is steel erection. So you heard from Rick and Pat's here as well from Badgerland. Um, we're really happy to see how tightly those about three bidders were um, aggressively going after this work. So, um, I had, uh, or Rick had an opportunity to speak here. We met with them in person last week, I think, just to talk to the job to get another level of reassurance. And uh, 
the right on budget there. So we'll see about that. The results. And then the final uh, larger scope uh, kind of in this comparison we set up is that glazing. So this is interior and exterior glazing and glass doors and hardware. And again, we got up to here from Tracy and the mobile glass team. Um, similar to Badgerland, we met with them in person last week to talk about project and resources. And I'm sure as you see, there was kind of a, a gap there between their number and uh, the other bidders. So we talked about that and you heard from Tracy that they were aggressive for this job. So that gave us the reassurance we needed to feel comfortable with that number. Do you know why Helen Brandt is almost a half million dollars more? We are sure. We, we, we talked to Helen Brandt and Lake City. I mean, everyone had the same square footages. The scope was the same. I'm not sure of their, of their workload compared to the others, but. Yeah, Jack, I, I'm guessing it has to do with some workload in terms of other projects they either have or are pursuing. Understood. If you recall, they were the subcontract <laughs> heritage. Yeah. As well, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're back to that. Put mine back now to that other document. So, yeah, that one there. Um, so we just kind of summarized a couple other contractor awards. So the top three we just went through, masonry, steel erection, and glazing. The next one on the list here is rebar erection. So Badgerland actually offered a, a, a package deal price, so a lower rebar number if they're awarded steel erection, which is shown here. That came out to about another 25 grand in savings from the next bidder. Uh, precast is the, there's some precast slabs on the project. We had two bidders that were really close actually within Know, one or two percent of each other, but uh, we feel up good about that award coming in really close to budget. And then metal framing, Stats and Harrop was also the contractor on existing heritage. We had three bidders that we were engaging with throughout the process there, and they came in um, right at budget as well. So, so those, um, I have to take questions on those three, I guess. Blue, blue. You mentioned that. So that number 178 was 25 less because they got the erection bid, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, there's an economy of scale from the on site to both steel and yeah, not yet there. Missed the budget number that put the one in. Yeah, but, there were some concrete changes from the bid time that we kind of saw throughout all the concrete related like scopes. So we borrowed on number two. Yeah. Then do you want to? Go back and go over to the Google Drive and you want to talk through what was what you emailed me yesterday. Um yes, so I did just throw in a big comparison for that frame and drywall number that we just talked about just because that was a lot a larger scope. So you can just see stats and wall tech. Um we're close there, but the other larger bid award we wanted to present was the roofing system. So roofing, there's pavers, uh some green roof arrays. <laughs> We got these numbers wrapped up um, early this week. And uh, as you can see, we talked to the low three bidders there. They were, um, all three had the full scope. We met, we met with Mally and uh, feel good about that number coming in slightly under budget. Yeah, if you could click on that as well. I think there was, not to have us hop back and forth too much here, but there, there was just one other bid for, uh, at the bottom there, that folding panel partition that I added to the overall summary. So that's just a an operable wall that separates two larger rooms in the building. Um, the, the last project I did that came like a year late, so we just wanted to release that as soon as possible for this one. So I came in right at budget, and that was the very big spectrum there. So Where, where's that folding wall going? It's in the hell. Maybe yeah, right? between the second floor by the gym. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Where's that? I'm sorry, I missed that. It's on the it's just above the gym area. There's like two health rooms that are divided and then the wall can open up to make one larger room. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. That was all. Yeah. So at this point, 
uh, what we're asking the facility committee to move forward would be the the list um, that was that Rebecca had up, which has the low um, bidder for each area and the vetting out process. Um, both the district and Vogel are are comfortable with moving forward with the the low bid award. Um, we've had you know additional conversations with some subcontractors just about scheduling and resources and feel comfortable with presenting this information to the facility committee today and are comfortable moving it forward uh, with the full board next Monday. So we'd be requesting uh, approval of moving forward with the list. Uh, if hey, you, Steve, uh, before, be, yeah. before you go into that, uh, what would be interesting is to uh, get the uh, dollar value of the contracts, total dollar value of the contracts of so contracts that we gave to uh, businesses within our district. Oh, sure. Yep. And Jack, we'll, I don't know if we ever provided that. I think I maybe did to the administration for Heritage, but we'll pull forward both Heritage and Middle School, Jack. Yeah, I know. That'd be great. And then we also look at it in terms of Dane County, too, because obviously if they're not local to want to key, but still within the county, and there's some positive economic impact to that as well. Right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve these eight. Low bid. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Adam. And then um, just for before we move on, so Adam, for the middle school, will you be requesting a July facility committee meeting? So it's a tight timeline because of the 4th of July. And when the board meeting is, but we can find a way to fit it in, uh, perhaps by June 28th, <laughs> before Randy has his last day. <laughs> so we have a policy on yeah, my last day. So okay, well, maybe <laughs> we can start we'll get, we'll get, we'll get that wrapped up. But <laughs> right. um, would you be wanting to see that just so we can, you know, have this in mind on Monday night? the last week in June, or do you want to try to do the first week in July, or how do you see that going? We would want, we'll, we'll have more bid ones with the month and that's the match to go through. Um, I, I think either week could work for us, end of June or that first week in July, I don't care if you. Yeah, I think either one would be fine. We both do have a conflict for the July 8th board meeting, but I thought, if we at least get in front of the facilities committee, I don't foresee there being any that are have any issues or anything. They could then just move forward out of the board. Oh, that's I'd say either one of those would work fine for us. We don't want to decide one day in terms of great day. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, the next agenda item is consideration of capital projects this month. We have a shorter list. Sure, thank you. So a couple things to uh, keep in mind. I'm going to ask Rebecca to first bring up the um, the tracking document, the first one. Um, and if you could, we'll just focus on the top here, Rebecca, for a minute. If you can make that a little bit bigger. Um, so just as a reminder of what we're tracking on this document is the, uh, if you go back to Jay's presentation, there was a maintenance um, area component of the referendum. So we started with that. Um, then we moved some work that was in the high school area, uh, became a part of the larger track project. So we moved that into, uh, into the maintenance category. Um, so we've added in uh, the GMP savings for um, heritage. Um, as you know, the difference with the middle school is we added back in the alternates and we added back in the solar. So at heritage, we actually removed some of the funds from the GMP and moved them into maintenance. At the middle school, you heard from Jay, we're taking a little bit of a different approach. We're removing alternates back in and removing the solar back in. Um, so that's why we don't have that on here. But we did then add in um, the interest that's been earned on 
Um, the first portion or the second portion of the borrowing, which was the 100 million, that doesn't include the interest on the 10 million that the board approved right away after the referendum passed. Um, so as we move forward and move beyond the summer of 24, the plan is to uh, have a discussion with this com committee about two things. We have the ability to move probably one and a half million dollars worth of interest from the first round of borrowing into this spreadsheet. And then ultimately you saw the heritage tracker early on, we have the ability to move eventually those heritage savings into the spreadsheet, which would put us in a position to then uh, be able to fund, call them summer 25 maintenance projects across the district. So that's another conversation later on uh, because we don't have the capacity to really take on you know, that level of additional projects right now. But what this does is it just tracks everything that's been approved throughout the length of the referendum. Um, the committee requested the detailed version that has the uh, each of the items identified separately underneath the dates of the board meeting that they were approved on. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of projects on this list, but just know this is a complete tracking document of everything to date. And Jay has offered uh, to keep this current for us, which we appreciate and sends this to us before each of these meetings. And then Rebecca, if you want to bring up this month's list. Hey, Steve, uh, that's 700 and $700,000 under the uh, 5 million that you're showing. Is that, uh, is that part of the 5 million? Do we... Rebecca, would you mind going back to the previous document? <laughs> And you can just look at just go to the top if you want to blow it up again. So so you've got uh funds available 731. Is that part of the five million that we've got to spend down? Yep, great question. So that really is the balance of all of the positive numbers above, which does include the five million from interest, the one million one hundred and twenty thousand that was added from heritage and then the original referendum amount. Um, yep. So we add in the positives on the budget ledger, and then you right. subtract what's been approved to date, that's really the balance. Um, you could consider that the remaining balance of the interest, it's just the remaining balance of the, of the positive adds to the budget above. Um, yep. Thanks for bringing up that number because that does connect with the next spreadsheet. And I wanna show how those two numbers connect. Uh, okay. We want to make sure that we don't bring projects forward in total that exceed what's on this tracking document. So if I can do one night going to the other document. So um, we so we've essentially spent the five million or we've got the uh, five million committed. We do have the five million dollars committed. Uh, and a lot of that is the major projects that are going on this summer. A good example of that at the high school, the clock balance. Yep system, the LED lighting system at Prairie and Arboretum. So yeah, it's those major projects that we've been approving in the last couple of months. Um, On this particular uh, spreadsheet, uh, you've got uh, repair of uh, dishwasher. Uh, has Isn't that dishwasher on its last leg? Wasn't, wasn't there one piece of equipment in the uh, kitchen that's been on its last leg? Um, I will ask John to answer that question. He's way more familiar with what's going on with the kitchen equipment than I am. So, John? Yeah, you might be thinking of the high school dishwasher, Jack. Uh, this okay. one, this dishwasher isn't that old. It's in decent shape. So, we decided that a repair would be more cost effective than replacing that thing. Okay. I just wanted to uh, confirm that. So I do want to point out the largest item that's on this list is related to something you've not seen before. So we did uh, incur storm damage a couple of weeks ago. Um, Scott has been working through that damage with uh, some of our some of our contractors. We have filed an insurance claim. 
Um, so even though you see the high school pool roof on this list, um, we have received a response back that um, our insurance policy uh, is replacement cost. Uh, even though that's an old roof, we don't have a deduction based on the fact that it's 18 years old. Um, so we're putting in a claim for the full amount of the replacement of that roof. Um, Scott has quite a few photos, but basically on the night of the storm, um, when we had uh, at the high school, we had a choir concert going on and other things going on in the district, water was just gushing into the pool area through the roof. Um, and a large volume of water actually got underneath the roof, and the concern is that the roof has been completely damaged. Uh, but it is an old end-of-life roof. Um, that roof goes back to when the pool was built in the 2004 referendum. So it's certainly coming to end-of-life, but this pushes the need forward. Um, so just know that we are making every effort on our end to file the insurance claim for the damages related to what happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. In fact, um, I just connected Scott with the person at Liberty Mutual um, to get the photos and the quotes and everything to them. So it's on this list, but I do believe there's a very high likelihood we're gonna receive a significant reimbursement back on it. Um, one other item that's on here that's larger that I want to call your attention to, and because it's really connected to yesterday. So yesterday we lost complete power at Bethel Circle, lost phones, lost internet, uh, basically didn't have any ability to communicate or, or function at all out here. Uh, John has previously received approval from this committee to move ahead with the generator project. But upon digging into that project and realizing the scope of what would be necessary to fully um, have this building be up and running in the event of a power outage, including our secondary data closet that's out here, uh, it's, a, it's a more extensive and expensive process than what we originally requested. So on this list, um, you will see additional cost of installing the generator at Bethel. Um, the intent behind that is to make sure that really what happened yesterday doesn't happen again. Um, and it is concerning that any power loss completely takes down this building. Uh, we really have no ability to function. Um, it was only like five minutes in and the internet went out, the phones went out. Um, and our secondary data closet is out here, which means that all went out. Um, I'm going to ask John just to touch a little bit on the work he's done on that. Um, really, the effort that, that John and his team have made to have functional generators in all of our schools and really what that does. But if you could just talk a little bit about that project. Sure, this would be for Westfall to help us with the uh, contracting of subcontractors for gas fitting the gas fired generator from natural gas in the building, pouring the concrete, uh, actually picking the generator out to the pad in the north side of the, the building, mm -hmm. the crane, and getting that done for us and connecting it with our transfer switches. So, um, Westfall has offered to manage the entire project, and this is where it's coming. What did, what did we approve before? The cost of the generator itself through Cummins. Okay, so this is the installation? Correct. Okay. And then there are certainly other items on the list that um, John would be able to answer any questions on. We're happy to take any questions on them. You do see, even though we're putting an insurance claim in for the damage, we've included the cost on this list, which does align with the spreadsheet that you previously saw. Uh, we obviously don't have the insurance money in hand, so we want to go through the claims process to receive that. Ultimately, if we do get a full replacement of the roof, we'll move that off this list and we'll cover it through our fund 10 because that's where proceeds go for property insurance uh, loss. Uh, but we just wanted to make you aware of it, get it on the list, and indicate that we're pursuing 
uh, a claim on that. But any other so questions? I'm, feel free. I, I'm assuming that uh, would happen this summer, right? That uh, roof. Scott, uh, August. If it's if it would be approved, it'd be an August deal. It might run a little bit into the school year, but uh, they could do it. I don't know if you heard that, Jack, but Scott said. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, August. Yeah. Can I make a motion? To... Can I, I just want to ask one question, Jack. Yeah. Where right. are the under fence most room? Is that all of our fences in the district? Correct. Oh, that'd be great. That's uh, got to be so time consuming. It is, absolutely. I, I do believe there are, I think, one or two sites may be excluded, but check with balance. This is going to cover 90, 90% of the fence. Okay. All right. So I do need a motion for this whole list, if possible. Jack? Motion Motion to approve as presented. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. And I think that brings us to the end of our meeting. And we'll set the next meeting Monday night. So I need motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Got you out of here by 8.30, Jack. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. You guys have a good day. You too. You too. Thanks, thanks Jack. Jack.